Last year on August 8th, 2023, four separate wildfires ravaged through Maui. It affected the towns of Lahaina and Kula. So my neighborhood was one of those affected by the fires. I had to manage, you know, my clinical duties while simultaneously like tracking down these fires through satellite images to tell my mom when to evacuate. So it was a very traumatic experience and um, I'm still kind of grappling with what had happened. It's still been very recent. There are both direct and indirect ways that climate change can impact folks' neurobiology, folks' mental health. The increase in fires directly impacts your brain because of the smoke inhalation, because of the uh, particles that are being inhaled. On mental health, um, the impact wasn't felt immediately at first just because people were in survival mode that first month. Um, people seemed to be really resilient immediately, like banding together, bringing supplies, food and water to the people that were displaced. It wasn't until tourism opened back up just mere months later that the hurt really started to be felt. The wounds were still fresh and the ashes didn't even settle at that point. A lot of people have um, like PTSD symptoms, um, nightmares, and like somatic symptoms, pain, um, fatigue, brain fog, and there are just not enough psychiatrists to handle the thousands of people that were affected on Maui. Climate change affects us all, uh, and there is no community that is safe from the effects of climate change, and especially its effects on mental health. That being said, uh, vulnerable communities are oftentimes the most effective, and vulnerable communities are going to be the ones uh, that are going to have the least ability to change their circumstances and to address their mental health. I think a lot of what we can do is at the child psych level, because a lot of kids are growing up with this rhetoric of climate change is coming and we only have a finite amount of time to take care of it. That's really scary for kids to hear. I grew up hearing that. So I think um, having child psychiatrists address those fears and talking about it with children to kind of grapple with it, give them the language to deal with it, and talk about it with their parents, um, to really deal with that at the level that it starts when you're growing up. There's plenty of things that we can do even as individual psychiatrists within our practice for our patients, for advocacy. I think for a lot of folks, climate change can seem overwhelming, but I want to remind folks that there's also reason for optimism. And oftentimes, in the face of adversity, that's when we thrive and that's when we can make the biggest impact and make the biggest difference.